This video is sponsored by World of Warships. During one of the battles of Dover Strait, the British destroyer HMS Broke rammed and became entangled with the German torpedo boat SMS G42. After separating, the torpedo boat sank and broke limped around for a bit before being towed back to Dover for repairs. Obviously in that engagement the ramming and subsequent sinking were intentional but it is a fantastic example of what happens in a collision and why modern ships take the actions they do when they collide. On the evening of 20th of April 1917, three groups of German torpedo boats set off from Zeebrugge to raid around the area of the Dover Barrage. The barrage was designed as a series of defences to prevent U-boats from accessing the English Channel and consisted of a combination of minefields and indicator nets positioned at varying depths and reinforced by patrols of destroyers on the surface. The smallest group, consisting of three raiders, was tasked with attacking the shipping in the Downs, an area between the Dover Strait and the Thames Estuary. The other two groups, with six raiders in each, were sent after the barrage itself, with each one having an additional target of either Dover or Calais. Around 23.30, the group tasked with attacking Dover were sighted by an Admiralty trawler and immediately opened fire. As they had minimal armaments themselves, rather than engage the raiders, the trawler went dark and managed to escape, tricking the Germans into believing that they'd been sunk. The raiding group then carried on towards the coast and opened fire randomly on Dover and the Kent countryside, drawing the attention of coastal artillery which returned fire. With that, they turned and set off towards the barrage right into the path of the Royal Navy's HMS Broke and HMS Swift who were on patrol around 3 miles to the east of the Goodwin light vessel. The British ships sighted this group of six V-25 class torpedo boats and set an intercept course. The V-25 is just one of the many vessels that you can experience through this vessel's sponsor, World of Warships. World of Warships is a free to play game available for PC. The V-25 is the first destroyer you'll have access to on the German tech line, providing an ideal introduction to the most nimble ship type. I love playing as a destroyer because I enjoy the fast paced nature of the game providing support to my heavily armoured teammates on battleships or cruisers. Whatever ship type you play though, you're going to experience breathtaking recreations of some of the most fearsome vessels of the First and Second World Wars, as well as many blueprints and designs of ships that never saw battle. New content is released every month, whether it's new ships, in-game nations, cosmetics or even ship classes. You can always count on enjoying fresh gameplay experience in World of Warships stunning 12x12 arenas. There are more than 40 unique maps with dynamic weather, all of which have been updated with stunning new water effects and textures, making the game's seas virtually indistinguishable from the real deal. Oh, and did I mention that it's also available on console? Jump aboard yourself and download World of Warships using the first link in the description. During registration, use the code WARSHIPS to get exclusive rewards, including a bunch of doubloons, credits, premium account time and a free ship after you complete 15 battles. Anyway, after sighting the six V-25s on their port bow, HMS Broke and Swift set an intercept course. HMS Swift was in the lead and turned to ram one of the German boats but missed and passed straight through the line. They took significant hits on the way through but still managed to return fire and even launch a torpedo which struck and disabled one of the torpedo boats, G85. Despite the damage, they were still able to turn and follow the raiders as they headed off towards the east. Meanwhile, on HMS Broke, they too aimed to ram the enemy, but at the last moment noticed their target had already been struck by a torpedo, so with some quick thinking and skill, aimed for the next vessel in line, G42. Running at close to her top speed, Broke struck the midship section of G42 at 27 knots, locking the two vessels together in a deadly embrace. Hand-to-hand -hand fighting erupted between the two crews on deck before HMS Broke managed to back away, leaving the crippled G42 to sink beneath the waves. Obviously, in this case, the crew of HMS Broke intended to sink G42, so backing away to leave a massive hole made sense, but in a collision between civilian vessels, this is what you want to avoid. A good example of this comes from the collision between the MV Baru Satu and the MV Catherine in 2013. The Baru Satu struck the port side of the Catherine, resulting in extensive damage to her bow and water ingress into number one cargo hold. The Catherine, on the other hand, sustained structural damage to number five hold, resulting in water ingress into the hold and surrounding spaces. On the advice of the salvers, the vessels remained attached to one another for the next three days before being towed apart and sent their separate ways for repairs. The logic is that in any collision, the vessel with the damage to the bow is likely to be significantly more stable than the other. On most ships, you have the four-peak tank at the very forward end, then an extra strong bulkhead called the collision bulkhead, designed to remain intact in the event of a collision. The vessel on the receiving end, however, is going to suffer a lot more damage, as she will have been penetrated by the other vessel, often straight through into a massive cargo hold, giving significantly more scope for water ingress. By keeping the vessels attached, you're using the vessel with less damage to help support the one that's in greater danger of sinking. 
This is why, in the event of a collision, you might find that rather than stopping your engines immediately, ship emergency procedures will probably say to consider the situation first. The vessel with only the bow damage might actually need to keep her engines ticking ahead instead. You'll also want to consider using mooring lines or other securing methods to ensure the two ships remain attached and stable until external help arrives. Obviously, in a wartime scenario where the goal is to sink the other vessel, you do want to run astern and remove your ship to stop it from acting as a bung. This is what HMS Broke did, leaving G42 to sink alongside the previously torpedoed G85. Broke then managed to manoeuvre far enough away to escape further damage from the sinking torpedo boats before becoming immobilised herself and needing to return to port under tow. The success of the interception by the British vessels that night resulted in a 10 month break from the overnight torpedo raids on the barrage and surrounding cities. More than enough time to repair, HMS broke and return her to sea. Again, a massive thanks to this video's sponsor, World of Warships. Download now using the first link in the description and remember to use the code WARSHIPS to get a bunch of exclusive rewards.